to allow students time to learn and to discuss without judgment, without prejudice. Um, my three children, my three sons went through the Newton schools. Their time there, although somewhat in the past, was not free of controversy and dilemmas. They all came through very well. They emerged with a solid education, the ability for inquiry, and the ability to succeed in their lives. And once again, I think this petition is not one that should be approved, and I urge the, the school committee to continue to support uh, allowing diverse viewpoints and open education in the Newton schools. Thank you. So again, if you hear a name called and you can't make it up to the microphone, we'll bring the mobile mic to you. You can just raise your hand. I'm going to read six more names and come to the microphone and raise your hand. Um, Rabbi Eric Gervis, Hattie Derrick, David Bedard, Sarah Banks, Peter Bearer, Lewis Pepper. Eric Gervis, Putnam Street, West Newport. Good evening. My family and I are in our 20th year of living in this wonderful community. For 18 of those years, I served as the senior rabbi of one of Newton's excellent faith communities. I continue to serve and teach in our community. I served as president of the Newton Clergy Association for four and a half years and continue to be involved. Most important to me is the fact that our four children were educated in the Newton Public Schools. Beginning in 1999, through the spring of 2016, when our youngest son, who spoke a few moments ago, graduated from North. I know that over the course of the years, improper materials have been brought before students by individual teachers. But in the interest of time, I'll not illustrate what I was going to do tonight. But I do want to highlight an aspect of the petition as it was brought by Education Without Indoctrination. They requested tonight's meeting and good for you that we are here holding this hearing. That's what we do in an open-minded, tolerant community. The petition writes, adopt a policy of total transparency regarding the curriculum. I agree, transparency is important, and it must be so in all subject areas. However, if we're speaking about transparency, I would like to ask why there isn't transparency from those making the request. I have read as much as I can on all sides of this issue, including the website of EWI. When I want to learn about any organization, any topic, I read about the organization's mission, goals, purpose, and more, and I also look to see who the leaders are. It troubles me that in reading the website for EWI, the petitioners, save for their attorney, one is hard pressed to identify any of the leadership. If we're going to demand transparency, let's have it on all sides. Let's know who is bringing the allegations. There's no doubt that anti-Semitism is on the rise across our country and around the world. As a Jew, rabbi, and American, I'm devastated by the events of one month ago in Pittsburgh. I'm troubled by the growing incidents of anti-Semitic expression in our own community. Two years ago, we witnessed a wave of anti-Semitic graffiti in and around our schools. But as a parent, resident, taxpayer, rabbi, and Jewish member of this community, I do not believe the curriculum nor the faculty of our schools promote anti-Semitism nor anti-Israel messages. It would be naive of me to suggest that no individuals have made improper statements. As a father of four graduates, I am confident that whatever the underlying causes that exist for the well-documented uptick in anti-Semitism, I do not believe our schools are contributing to it. Good evening. My name is Sarah Banks, and I am uh, uh, an alumna of Newton North High School, class of 2005. I'm also a third generation, born and raised in Newton. So my dad grew up in Newton. My grandmother grew up in Newton. I have a host of family members sitting out here. Um, <laughs> I feel like it has to be said um, that 
Our teachers work super hard. Oh, and I'm also a parent of a child coming up in Newton. And I feel like it's important to say that our teachers work very hard every day to make sure that they're presenting an entire worldview. I cannot say that I was ever presented one side of any argument. Um, in my senior year, I'm sure that some graduates of Newton North are familiar with, I'm not sure if they still have it, but it was called the leadership class. It was basically a class with a variety of kids from different um, ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds. We all came together and we talked about all the issues that we face as um, people living in this society. And I feel like that class and my teachers in that class not only taught me how to think critically, but allowed me to form my own opinion. The reason that I have my own voice and feel comfortable speaking like this is because I grew up in Newton and was allowed the chance to always express myself how I wanted to. I definitely agree with all other students that have stood up and said that they always felt like even if your point of view was not the general point of view in the class, your point of view was always supported. I know my teachers always did a great job. I'm an African American female, as you can see, and I always felt like my views were supported. I never, ever felt singled out. And if I did, my teachers were the first people who would sit me and whoever down and make sure that we were able to talk through whatever. I feel like um, when in my professional life now, when I tell people that I grew up in Newton and went to school in Newton, they're almost envious because we all know that we have an amazing school system. As a parent, I don't. I I have to say that I don't support this petition because I want my daughter to grow up and know that she has a, a voice because her teachers have supported her. And I feel like that's. Um, tolerance is a core value, as many have said, and I feel like Newton is a tolerant community. Yes, we have different views. Sometimes we won't agree, but the best part about Newton, the lore of people coming and moving to Newton, top thing is our school system. And I feel like that's what we need to focus on, the fact that we have a great school system. And while every no one's perfect, um, I agree that I'm sure there have been times that, that there has been inappropriate material, but at the core of us, we are a tolerant community willing to present different um, points of view, and I feel like this petition should not be supported because we can't take that away from our students. Thank you. My name is Peter Barrow. I've lived in Newton over 35 years. Uh, two, I've had two children, my wife and I, who attended the schools. We're happy with the results and with the schools. I've been quite active in the Jewish community. I've been the past president of my congregation. I've served many years on the Jewish Community Relations Council. I'm a strong supporter of Israel. I've traveled there 16 times in connection with a, a Jewish community project in the city of Haifa. And I'm a firm opposer of anti-Semitism. And I'm here to speak against the petition. Um, I appreciate the patience the school committee has shown with this petition and the other things that people behind it have been doing. You need to hear from everyone, but I imagine by now you find it to be a distraction from the work you need to do. I've watched the controversy develop over in the tab over the past years, and I felt the school committee has been dealing with it appropriately, even as I strongly disagreed with the petitioner's statements and demands. But now I am compelled to speak up and take the time to attend this hearing. It's my birthday. <laughs> Newton parents are very involved in their children's education. Already they are. The petitions do not speak for the majority of the Jewish community. They seem to be driven by ideology and politics. Their methods have become intimidating in style and substance, attacking individual teachers. This petition is an embarrassment to our community. They do not speak for the majority of Newton parents. Newton parents respect the intelligence of their children in the schools, and they want their children to learn how to navigate difficult questions. In sum, I oppose the petition and believe it is wrong, wrong, wrong. Thank you. My name is Lou Pepper. Uh, I live at 23 Omar Terrace, Newtonville. I'm speaking against the adoption of the petition. I'm a retired physician and professor of public health. I live in Newton and have 
three children, all of whom graduated from Newton North Public, Newton Public Schools. My children are now adults, and each in their very different fields has benefited greatly from core values of the Newton Schools. As a parent and an educator, I'm concerned by the rise over the last five years of a group called Americans for Peace and Tolerance. APT has targeted the Newton School District, its superintendent, its teachers, and most recently has publicly attacked and called for the firing of two Newton North history teachers, one of whom was a beloved teacher of my younger daughter. One of the charges APT has leveled is that the teachers and their curriculum are anti-American and anti-Semitic. These accusations are not only wrong, they are incredibly dangerous. In the US and throughout the world, as people have said before me, true anti-Semitism is increasing as white nationalism, racism, xenophobia continue to rise. It is this bigotry that we need to prepare Newton students to confront. Perhaps one might conclude confronting bigotry and anti-Semitism is not actually APT's true concern. In fact, when the president of APT, Charles Jacobs, seems most concerned with, what he seems most concerned with, is attacking free and open inquiry. In a 2017 tweet, November 5th to be precise, he says, blowing up ISIS jihadis, now, if we only had intellectual bombs to take out American radical leftists, end of quote. In my opinion, APT has already hurled an intellectual bomb by attacking the Newton public schools. Like actual bombs in warfare, they not only hit their intended targets, in this case, teachers and superintendent, but they damage everyone, threatening to make Newton students less prepared for the challenging and complex world they will enter. I asked my oldest daughter, a 2003 Newton North graduate, what she thought about the attacks on the schools. And she said, my Newton North education taught me that critical thinking means looking with an honest and rigorous eye at historical and current events. Only in this way can we contribute to a world that is just and equitable, that fosters true creativity, collaboration, and innovation. The true victims in all of this are the students who have the APT, APT petition is successful, and the respect of the so-called education without indoctrination group is implemented will be denied an education based on free and open inquiry. Thank you. Good evening. My name is David Bidar. I started my career as a history teacher at Newton North High School 12 years ago. I love what I do, as do all the educators sitting here tonight. We love our students. We love working alongside smart, dedicated, and thoughtful professionals. Many of us wanted to teach in Newton for the educational excellence of the schools and the community's unwavering commitment to the core values of integrity, open-mindedness, civil discourse, and respect for the dignity of all people. Three years ago, I developed a senior elective course called the Middle East, Asia, and Latin America. I was excited to teach about these regions because they're so important for understanding our modern world. But I never anticipated to hear accusations of bias and anti-Semitism. These claims are a personal affront to me as a professional educator, as a Newton resident, and as a Jew. As you've heard from other speakers tonight, all Newton teachers condemn unequivocally any type of harassment or bias, including racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism. We won't let baseless charges intimidate us into providing anything less than the very best education for our students. The study of history goes beyond memorizing facts. We examine multiple perspectives and ask why people think and act the way they do. The goal is not to advocate for any particular position, but rather the, to get students to move past simplistic arguments and one-sided narratives. Students are assessed on the clarity of their reasoning and evidence. As a result, they learn to think for themselves. Teachers provide a safe classroom setting for students to grapple with difficult topics. We facilitate debates and discussions that sometimes get heated, but are thoughtful and productive. We help students cultivate the ability to empathize with views that are different from their own. We spark in them a curiosity about their country and their world. 
This, for me, is what teaching is all about. Teachers should not avoid teaching challenging subjects or be intimidated into watering down their curriculum. Students need to see the adults in their lives model what it means to stand for what they believe in. That is why I'd like all those present who support the curriculum and values of the Newton Public Schools to stand at this time. We teachers, we have lessons to prep. We have students to teach tomorrow. It's time for us to get to that job, our real job. Let's go get ready for class. Thank you. Go ahead, Hattie. I'm a par uh, parent of two children in another Newton Public Schools and the chair of the Newton Human Rights Commission. On behalf of the Newton Human Rights Commission, we want to voice our support, admiration for our excellent Newton Public School teachers. We support the courageous conversations that they have each and every day with our children, their students. The role of an educator is varied. They are meant to mentor, nurture, and be role models for and more commonly to impart knowledge. Our educators are meant to foster intellectual dialogue and critical thinking. They are meant to encourage our students to learn from the past so they can make a change in their future, our future. Our Newton educators do that and much more. I will conclude with two quotes from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And Margaret Mead, Children must be taught how to think, not what to think. It's, sir, if, sir, if you're not quiet, I'm going to ask you to leave. We are hearing from everyone. I will. Um, I believe that's Helga, who happens to be next on my list. I have. Six names, Helga Lustig, Sadia Baylock, Jerry, T-U-I-T-E, Scott Aquilina, Aaron Sharder, and Jane Coles Ryder. Yes. Sure. Okay, we'll bring the mic up to Helga. And could other people please line up? Of stage I don't know why people are walking out on us. I think you should listen to other points of view as well if you're going to get down. If Helga, if you would like to speak, go ahead and speak. Other people are going to be asked to leave. Now be quiet. Hold it right up to your mouth. I'll hold the mic. I'll hold the mic. Uh, um, our, our mayor. Personally, right, you've met me as, as friends. I just want to say, I lived in Newton since 1940, uh, and I am a refugee from Nazi Germany. And, at the, and I want a special time because I have a lot to say, okay? Um, when I, I, I came here uh, as, uh, you know, uh, my father was already in concentration camp. He got out of school all kinds of things, and we all came as a, as a family to Newton in 1940. Uh, this was, there was uh, only a, I just want to quickly say how Newton looked, okay? Newton only had one Jewish community in the Wall Street area. And uh, we didn't know when you move into a community, so because we didn't do that in Germany. <laughs> So we moved, we moved on Newton Avenue, we started there. Uh, we didn't have a penny to our name because everything had been taken away. Uh, we were coming on the last boat 
All right. The war was going on, and, and just to know that I went to sixth grade, and then I went to the North High School, and my best friend was Bertha Lyon, she's still alive, uh, and uh, I used to go to school with her to the high school, and the old high school, where it was a North High School, it was a uh, tall building, and Mr. Lasko was there forever, he was a music teacher and he taught uh, uh, on the fourth floor there. And then there was uh, the other building and the big, uh, the, 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 the person that was really it uh, in, uh, in, in Newton and, and about our Newton education was Leonard Bernstein who would come and go to the, uh, and, and teach all of us, the whole school. Uh, what he used to do was the music. So the, the background, okay? From there, uh, okay. Uh, what I want to say is, uh, we, you know, there was, a, uh, and that's, that's how long I'm in Newton and how, how grateful we were to be here because Roswell didn't rescue all the Jews. I found that out later. But <laughs> we, we loved Roosevelt because he, you know, uh, we, we were saved. Otherwise we would be killed. Um, so anyway, coming with that, I went to school with Bertha and her. Helga, yeah, your time is up, thank you. Can we go on to the next speakers? Can you remind us who's next, Steve? Um, hello, my name is Sadia Hussein Baloch, and I live at 229 Woodcliffe Road in Newton Highlands. I've lived in Newton for 46 years. I'm a proud graduate of the Newton Public Schools, Countryside, Meadowbrook, and Newton South. I'm the parent of two Newton South alumni, class of 2010 and 2017. So I spent a lot of time in this building. And I want to say that I'm in full support of our school committee, our superintendent, and all our teachers. As a student here, um, I recall taking modern European history and my teacher mentioned the concept of the Judeo-Christian Muslim tradition. And for me, that was a huge door opening to have my tradition recognized by my teacher. Um, I have to say that there is a reason that our students here perform so well on the national stage. I've had kids on both the Lion's Roar as Editor-in-Chief and on uh, the Newton South speech team. These, the publications, the team, the debaters, the extempers, they can perform really well on the national stage because they are trained to think critically and analyze issues by our teachers. And I have to say that um, that is one of the things that makes me a huge proponent of our schools and then um, things, events that happen here, for example, the One Book, One School event, which brings in speakers from many different points of view, from different religions, different communities. To have things like that for our students gives them opportunities they would not have in most other school systems. So I want to voice my support again. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane Coles Ryder. I'm a resident of Newton Center, 15 Trinity Terrace. Also a clinical psychologist serving the Newton community and the parent of a re recent Newton South graduate and a current Newton South 10th grader. I'm also Jewish and have raised my children in the Jewish faith. I'm here tonight to speak in support of the Newton Public Schools History Department, for which I have a great deal of respect. I applaud the teacher's commitment to educating students to grapple with complicated issues from a range of perspectives, preparing them for a world that has become increasingly complex to navigate. My children and their friends have reported that their teachers are genuinely interested in the subject matter they teach and prioritize distinguishing fact from opinion during often lively classroom discussions. My son's favorite high school subject was history, largely, I believe, because of the way in which it was taught. Students were active learners engaged in understanding and analyzing deep and often controversial topics. As a 
sophomore, my daughter is now taking her second world history course and looking forward to U.S. history as well as other electives. My sense that history at the high school level goes far beyond teaching students to memorize facts. Rather, it serves as a vehicle for helping them to think critically, as everyone has said, research ideas, distill problems, and ultimately express informed, evidence-based arguments in verbal and written form, all life skills that are applicable to a wide range of disciplines. I am disheartened to hear that our history teachers have been criticized and appallingly personally harassed for the thoughtful hard work that they do every day to educate our children in ways that engage them and help them to grow into responsible, active citizens. As involved members of the Jewish community, both of my children are highly sensitive to expressions of anti-Semitism. Neither child has ever expressed experiencing any type of anti-Semitic bias in the Newton Public School classes, nor have I ever personally heard this concern expressed by my children's peers, a peer parent, or a congregant at my synagogue. I hope that the actions being proposed tonight will soon be dismissed so that our teachers can focus on continuing the excellent job that they are doing educating our students and our public schools can maintain the level of intellectual rigor that prepares our children so beautifully to go out into the world and make valuable contributions. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I believe you must spell my name. My name is Aaron Schneider. I think you got my last name wrong. I live at 417 Green Lodge Street, and I'm a spokesman for EWY. Ladies, gentlemen, representatives of the Newton School Committee. So we find ourselves here yet again. Or should I say that we find ourselves here at last. To those in the audience who may not know, this assembly is not a recent development. In fact, it just happens to be the culmination of a hard-fought, seven-year-long battle against the unyielding cogs of our educational institutions. Over such a long span of time, and through countless tedious school committee meetings, our temperamental memories often let things slip. So, as a public service, let us recount the sheer totality of damning evidence that lies before us. Let's remember that the relationship between our community and the school administration was not always so antagonistic. Quite the opposite. We gave these public servants our children, trusting them to endow the next generation with a nuanced education and critical thinking. Imagine our, our surprise then, seven years ago, when it was discovered that these trusted educators used Saudi-funded textbooks to brainwash our youth. These texts were, of course, totally inaccurate, caricaturing Israel, for example, as a fundamentalist ethnostate. Even now, seven years down the line, I can't help but be puzzled by the sheer irony of such an arrangement. Saudi Arabia, a country where only Muslims are allowed into the holy city of Mecca, accusing Israel of institutional religious fundamentalism? Saudi Arabia, the same country that only last year allowed women to drive, alleging that Israel is the region's true violator of women's rights. Little did Newton parents know that every day while they were at work, their children would be continually misled and influenced by the world's foremost sponsor of terrorism. When the news of this first broke and our community had a chance to reflect on this grievous miscarriage of authority, many among us naively believed that it was some sort of mistake. We came to you in meeting after meeting, pleading for answers and begging for change. For a group of politicians, I will admit that you genuinely surprised me. I expected you to lie or to deflect, as public officials often do in order to wriggle out of such a PR crisis. Instead, where I expected lies, we were met with a deafening silence. And although you said nothing, your silence told us everything we needed to know. Seven years have passed since then, and although the evidence of the school committee's bias continues to grow, their response has never wavered. When Cameron's investigation found even more evidence of Israeli bias, of anti-Israel bias, silence. When the movie Ismail, played during a mandatory assembly, slanderously depicted Jewish-Israeli soldiers abusing and exiling Palestinians, silence. When emails from within this very school administration uncovered a concerted effort within Newton North's history department to eradicate objectivity in the name of social justice, silence. This community has had just about enough of your silence. If this committee, as it has for years, refuses to work with us to eradicate this propaganda, it is in turn up to us to solve our problems. Oh, your time's up. Thank you. Go ahead. My name is Jerry Tewitt. No applause. I come from Hopkinton, Massachusetts. I came into this controversy two years ago, many years after it started. I know a lot of the people in EWI. I got involved 
because everything that these people talked about and fought is documented in this book. It's about political bias and anti-Semitism and historical inaccuracy that was injected into your curriculum. And all they were asking for was to take it out. Five years after they started, they were still working at it. They couldn't get it out. And that's why I got involved. I, I couldn't understand this, especially in Newton. I never heard anyone in that organization demean teachers. I'm shocked at what I'm hearing. It's never been about the teachers, never about the system, only about the inaccuracy and the substance. That's all, and that's why I'm here. I'm a Christian, I'm not a Jew, and I can't stand by. The, the request made of this committee, transparency, vetting, explaining what anti-Semitism is, and there's some Russian Jews here who can explain it to you if you don't really understand what it is, because they've been through it, and how to recognize it, and how you've been exposed to it. That's all they're asking. How could any uh, school committee see this as anything but an opportunity? Even a few of your own teachers acknowledge, as we found out last summer, they are propagandizing. They freely proclaim the right to press their own ideology and morality in their classroom, even after showing it crossed the line. They declared objectivity the real threat. What initially appeared to be innocent mistakes now is revealed as something quite the opposite. The introduction into Newton schools of racist memes, historically inaccurate narratives, and political bias has been deliberate. More and more, it seems Newton has not been the victim of an unfortunate mistake. It was chosen for an ideological battle. And the demands made by these citizens in EWI to cease is not a surrender by Newton schools. It's an opportunity. Nobody who came to this mic tonight disputed anything in this. Not one of you. You're talking about your analytical ability. It wasn't a student who brought this to the superintendent's attention. It was outsiders. Look, my hat's off to your teachers, all right? I don't have a problem. But as a Christian, I cannot stand by and watch it happen again. Applause, please. Last call for Scott Aquilina. I'm going to read six more names. Uh, Jason Albert Wisnia, Ellen Thompson LaFlem, Tamika O-L-S-Z-E-W-S-K-I, and Ronna Kidwell, Sally Brickell, and Susan Albright. Uh, hi, my name is Jason. Uh, I live right off Calm Ave, and I'm a current uh, senior at Newton North High School. Um, the speaker for me just referred to the fact that no one really argued against that book. Um, I'm someone who likes reading, you know, the other side. I always have. I've met with a lot of political, group, political groups in the United States, especially last summer. I met with the NRA, pro-life, uh, Planned Parenthood. A lot of groups on both sides of many issues. I've never seen that book before. Um, so I can't personally argue against anything in it. But what I can say is, uh, before me a speaker spoke to the fact that that assembly was mandatory, uh, I was there for that propaganda film. As they put it, sure, it was a pro-Palestinian film, I'll admit that, but it was not a mandatory assembly. Te my teacher, personally, told me ahead of time that we would be going down and that they would be showing a documentary. We were, you know, we had to come for, uh, not to get an absence, but if you, did, if you didn't want to stay there, you didn't have to. They let you leave if you felt uncomfortable. It was not mandatory. I understand the argument that they're making that Mila was promoting anti-Semitism. I can see where that opinion comes from. But the issue more is that they're talking about stuff in books that I've never seen before. I mean, I'm a high schooler at Newton North, and I've been hearing about this stuff since I was a freshman. It started like really hitting the, hitting the haystacks when I was a freshman, the swastikas in bathrooms, the Catholic memorial incident, all that stuff. The Confederate flag last year, that all happened when I was rising at Newton North, and it gave me an impression very different from the one my father had as a graduate from the 1970s, if I'm correct. 
dating him. But um, the point is, I don't think Newton North is anti-Semitic. I identify myself as a moderate conservative, and I've been talking to people in, in the administration lately about creating an, an organization dedicated to promoting you know, people who might not have devoutly Democrat thoughts. And I've, from the people I've spoken to, I've had support. I think Newton North is not anti-Semitic. I just think that people who are prone to seeing fallacies in literally anything are just coming forwards and saying it. And the fact that they're people from outside of our town makes me personally feel like they have nothing to lose in pushing their beliefs. And I think that that personally, as a current student, is frightening. Because I'd rather have, I, I would rather have someone from Newton be, put, be uh, putting forward that book. I would feel a lot more comfortable with that. And, you know, as much as they're going to say that a lot of them weren't given the opportunity to speak earlier, that might have been because they weren't, they didn't write their name early enough. And heckling sure ain't going to make them sound better. So, you know, they'll laugh and whatever, I've been hearing them do it, but I think that as a current student, I can definitively say I don't feel like Newton North has targeted me for being Jewish. My name is Tamika Olszewski. I am a resident of Newton, 341 Lexington Street. I'm a Newton resident and the mother of two students attending Newton Public Schools. In A Testament of Hope, his collection of speeches and essays, Martin Luther King wrote, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I came across this quote while searching for a way to explain my philosophy that the way you fight matters. It matters almost as much as the underlying fight in the first place. Here I understand the instinct to protect against a perceived repetition of an ugly history and the pain inherent in the thought of that past. I understand, empathize, and I share in the abhorrence to anti-Semitism. However, I cannot understand, nor can I condone, the manner of this fight. Rampant incivility, hateful discourse, intimidation, and harassment is the darkness, not the light. The way you fight matters. And this is not the way to engage in a dialogue. In my experience, the Newton Public Schools have made great strides in opening dialogues with various groups and partnering with those groups to listen, to learn, and to evolve. That is, di is validation that dialogue does happen here. Again, I can understand how rational fear of a not too distant past can manifest into ir an irrational urge to attack where no attack is warranted. As in this case, it can manifest in an urge to demonize the act of critical thinking and to instill fear in those who teach our children. But this is not the way. <coughs> Civility matters. And those of us who actually live in this city, who are fortunate enough to educate our, our children in these schools, we know that the schools are excellent, as are our teachers, and we know that this petition should be denied. Hi, I'm Rana Kidwell. Oh, okay. I'll hold it. I'm Rana Kidwell, and I live at 56 Kenwood Avenue. I'm the parent of a recent uh, Newton Public Schools graduate and one current student. And I'd like to say that based on the national political climate and what we see going on in our country, the most important thing we can accomplish in our public school system today is to teach students how to think critically. And by that, I mean how to identify bias, identify propaganda, and most importantly, research facts that can either support or undermine an argument. Um, that students should be able to be presented with multiple sides of an argument and think critically and independently and draw their own conclusions. 
And to think that we have teachers in our school system who are shying away from controversial topics uh, because of harassment is unconscionable to me. Throughout history, it's worth noting that authoritarian regimes have succeeded and done horrible things with the benefit of education systems that were designed to indoctrinate rather than to teach critical and independent thinking. And those school uh, education systems absolutely had curriculum that was thoroughly vetted and approved by a panel of experts. If we don't teach our students to think critically and independently, there's not much else we do that's going to matter. And to speak to the uh, quote from Martin Luther King, my vision would be that we are educating a generation of students who will go out and be beacons of light in the world and illuminate. Thank you. Um, last call for Sally Raquel or Ellen, and Ellen Thompson LaFlemme. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, hi. Hi, I'm Sally Brickle. I live in Newton Corner. Um, our family wishes to express our support for the history teachers and the history department at Newton North High School. Four members of our family have studied history at Newton North and found the classes serious and thought-provoking. They have been exposed to diverse ideas and encouraged to form their own opinions. Here are comments from two family members about one of the teachers who has been targeted. One of the students said, my history teacher is incredibly skilled at presenting complex material in a way that can be understood. As a teacher of advanced placement US history, he was extremely professional and was loved by everyone. He followed the order dictated by the AP curriculum, but presented his lectures in a funny and interesting way. Despite the class's challenging pace and content, everyone enjoyed it. And at the end of that year, this teacher was honored with the Paul Ellicker Award for Excellence in Teaching. The second family member, who's a current student stated, student, stated, my teacher uses multiple source materials to ensure that he is presenting all sides of a conflict. And I just want to add personally that I was recently helping said student with a paper for history class, and we did together learn about the Balfour Declaration. So to reassure the, the um, speaker earlier, that is something that is being taught. Um, in to summary, I want to say that we appreciate the hard work that is being done by the History Department at Newton North and the valuable education the department provides. Thank you. I'm Ellen Thompson Laflamme. I'm here tonight because my 26-year-old daughter asked me to come on her behalf. I'm very proud to say she had to be at work um, in New York. And she had very strong feelings about the educators at Newton North um, who readied her for that early career stage. And I feel great about that. I'm a former public school kindergarten teacher myself. I spent about 35 years teaching young children. And I feel good teaching is an art. Um, I can't do it well with high schoolers. Um, I know my audience. And I really challenge people in the room to sit through uh, a double period of AP history with the kids today and keep them motivated and keep them interested. It is a tough job. And when she got to NYU film school, she called me and said, thank you for raising me in Newton, Mom. I'm meeting people from all over the world. I have professors from all over the world. And I feel so ready, um, so well brought up, so many open opinions. And I credit the school system with that. I thank you for serving on the school committee. I thought about it, but ugh, never did it. And um, I have great respect for what you do every day. And I thank encourage you. any parent oh, to sorry. go to, that's OK. I want to be brief. I know it's late. <laughs> kindergarten short attention span too. Um, but we want to say um, thank you for all the things you're doing and thank you for helping us raise our child with this kind of a view that she wanted to be here tonight. She was going to prepare a statement for me and I reassured her, you needn't do that, Ramy. There are people, our neighbors, I think I only recognize two or three people in this room at the most, but I'm glad to live here. And I am very delighted as a former New Yorker that when we looked at houses and they talked about 
where the kids' bedroom is, we're right on the Newton line, determines the school system, Newton Waltham. <laughs> So, you know, we were going to have her sleep in a garage at the evening, but um, we bought in West Newton right on the line, and I could not be more thrilled. I'm working in the city of Cambridge. There's a huge amount of problems with racism in a progressive city like Cambridge, in a progressive international city like London, Paris, look around the world. Kids travel. Newton North brought her on a Paris exchange program. She brought me back last year to show me what she learned. Um, they are global citizens now, and it's on us to keep them open-minded and make them into beautiful people, because we do need more light and more intellectuals to work on old problems in our world. So thank you. All right, the next six names are Norman Greenberg, Judy Elevitz Greenberg, Jean Itkis, Tom Mountain, Karen Hurwitz, Richard, and I can't quite read the name, but it might start with an S A C T. Uh, my name is Norman Greenberg. I live at 20 Donner Road in Newton. I've been a resident of the city of Newton for 45 years. I've had five children and grandchildren. The five children and stepchildren come through the system. I am here to support the petition. I cannot understand your absolute refusal to make some sensible changes in the Middle East Studies curriculum. We need to seriously consider making them when a significant number of concerned and offended Jewish parents, of high school students, and many others have been asking, you know, begging you to do this for over seven years now. You must think we are a crazy, ill-advised fringe group and that you are the only educated adults in the room. Are you that arrogant? I take your disregard as a personal insult. Do you think that the parents and citizens of the city have no right to be involved in the school curriculum? That this committee of elected officials has no responsibility to the taxpaying constituents who have elected them? That you can just ignore us and we'll go away? Have you no shame? The evidence of bias, falsehoods, and anti-Semitism in the teaching of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is overwhelming. Highly regarded educational organizations have weighed in their carefully considered opinion. Just to refer to two of the many organizations, in 2015, a Florida-based academic service called Verity Educate evaluated study materials obtained from students and wrote a highly critical, comprehensive, 153-page report, concluding among other things, that the Middle East curriculum contained multiple easily refuted instances of inaccurate and false information. Two, academic dishonesty ranging from plagiarism to false information. Three, materials taken directly from hate-filled religious proselytizing website. And four, repeated biases against Israel and the U.S. and biases that sanitize the ideology of actions of terrorists. It is reported that the executive director, Verity Educate, approached Newton school officials three times with the report, but did not receive a single response. In 2017, the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America, known as CAMERA, a nationally recognized uh, organization, published a 108-page monograph with numerous examples of offending and false study materials and aptly titled Indoctrinating Our Youth. This well-documented study essentially updates, confirms, and re-emphasizes the findings of the Verity Report. It also discusses the importance of transparency and points out that Massachusetts statutes allow any citizen, not just parents, access to all materials teachers use with students since they are considered public records. The Cabaret Report points out directly to the school committee, and I quote, calling upon Report experts from outside who are unaffected by the opinions Thank of Thank you. Your time's up. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Judy Elevitz Greenberg. I am uh, a graduate of the Newton South High School class of 1977. I love my school, I love my teachers, my children. All seven of them, kids, uh, children, and stepchildren, 
graduated Newton South High School. They love their school and uh, most of them love their teachers. So I look over here and I see how much the children now love their teachers because this place was jam-packed. And I don't know, one teacher said, get up and leave, and they all got up and left. So that's, uh, that's the indoctrination we're getting here. And that's really frightening to me. So, um, excuse me, excuse me. I, you know, I held it in. I held it in when people were calling me, uh, were, um, were demonizing me for finding fault in the curriculum of the history department, of what my children were learning in the mid about the Middle East. My son came home to me and told me that he had a, there was a map in, in his classroom of the Middle East. There was no Israel there. It was not named Israel. What's up with that? And when I wanted to go in to complain, my son begged me not to say anything because he wanted his teachers to like him. He had colleges, college applications ready to go. He needed those recommendations. These children, are so, young adults, are so vulnerable because they need so much from these teachers. It doesn't matter what they teach them, they will understand, they will believe, and they will repeat it. Thank you very much. I do support Newton values, by the way. There are values. Honesty, transparency, and being nice to each other. Thank you. Who's next? <clears throat> My name is uh, Richard Salter. I live at Stephen Place in Newton. Uh, I wouldn't sign the petition that was going around, but I did graduate. I do have seniority in the class in 1962 North. Uh, that's just before the two high schools split. And I think there is a split from what I understand from my reading is that the Saudi Arabian dictated study guide was in Newton South. So all these students who are talking about Newton North and their experience in history there may not be as relevant. I just want to clarify something about Charles Jacobs and APT. I'm not a friend of Charles Jacobs. Uh, uh, he's a nice enough fellow. I'm not a member of APT. But I do know something about Charles's history. Uh, He's a fellow who went out on his own and rescued slaves, black slaves, in Africa uh, and was acknowledged for that. And so I don't think to categorize him as some kind of uh, uh, hysterical uh, right-wing uh, uh, ideologue is accurate. I don't know how many slaves people in this room have rescued recently, but there's a guy who uh, went out and did something quite righteous in the name of freedom and human rights. Well, your applause, please. I didn't come here to defend Charles, but I, I just think that, you know, what's happening here is that people are being categorized. There's the right and there's the left. And it's all confused. Critical thinking is kind of an absurd concept. We're here to defend critical thinking. I think we all should be here to defend the truth. The truth, the truth should be absolute. So when you talk about school curriculums dedicated to, curriculum, to critical thinking, and I confronted Dr. Fleischman on the subject, because I've been at these absurd school committee meetings where we're stared down by these uh, committee members, never responded to, like we are some kind of uh, radical group of complainers. All we wanted, was the truth to be taught in the schools. And you say, well, the truth is taught about everything in, in school except Israel. Now somebody referred to Martin Luther King, and, 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 and I thought, that's great. He's one of my heroes. And Martin Luther King said that anti-Israel is anti-Semitism. He understood what anti-Israel meant in all of its forms. And right now, these kids are leaving the schools, Newton South, Newton North, 
and they're going to enter colleges where anti-Semitism is alive and well, where Jewish kids can't even wear or acknowledge their Jewishness because people associate Jewish kids with Israel, and Israel has become not politically correct. And this is what's being taught in Newton School. Thank you. Hold your applause, please. Hi, my name is Karen Hurwitz. I've been before you before. Um, I am the lawyer for education without indoctrination. And um, I'm from Concord, Massachusetts. It seems to me that this controversy over a very limited aspect of the curriculum did not have to explode into this community-wide battle that is getting national attention. This is, the, the controversy is not about Newton values. Everybody agrees that Newton values are great. And it's not about the value of critical thinking, which nobody is even attempting to disparage. It's not about abstract teaching. It is simply, and it's not about uh, teachers not being dedicated. The majority of teachers, I am sure, and I've heard from the students, are dedicated, devoted professionals. However, um, in this one area, the materials have found to be inaccurate. And so they should have been changed to reflect the truth. Why is that so controversial an idea? Why are people who bring the inaccuracies to light labeled as hate groups? Why are the teachers, administrators, and school committee and students just circling the wagons? Why not fact check? Camera, and uh, Mr. Tewitt brought the book, has done an excellent job of just that. First in its monograph published last year and just yesterday in its update. I have never heard that any of the points that camera makes have been refuted. If you fact check, you will find that every single point they make is undeniably and unquestionably true. So why not just say, thank you for pointing this out. We do not want to teach children hateful, inaccurate material. We will change it. Why is that such a controversial thing to do? I watched the rally put on by Superintendent Fleischman and the teachers and I was totally baffled. They said nothing about the substance of any of the complaints. They merely held signs that said, hate has no place here, and they complained of being targeted. Well, if hate has no place in Newton, why not just take hate out of the curriculum? If the teachers don't want to be called out, why don't they take responsibility for what they're teaching? I read the articles that they're complaining about. There's nothing hateful about them. They were an expose course teachers cornered by what they've been taught teaching and they're called out that it's wrong, they would be